The law cannot make an assumption about good and bad parenting based on the sexuality of individuals. Such an assumption perpetuates a stereotype based on sexuality that only heterosexuals are good parents and all other parents are bad parents, which is prohibited by Article 15. This assumption is not different from the assumption that individuals of a certain class or caste or religion are better parents. In view of the above observations, the adoption regulation is violative of Article 15 for discriminating against the queer community. The Union of India has not proved that precluding unmarried couples from adopting a child, even though the same people are eligible to adopt in their individual capacity, is in the child's best interest. The SCARA has exceeded its authority by prescribing an additional condition by way of Regulation 5.3, which is contrary to the tenor of the Ju Juvenile Justice Act and Section 57 in particular. The adoption regulations use marriage as a yardstick to classify couples. There is an intelligible differentia in using marriage as an indicator to classify couples in the sense that married couples can easily be distinguished from unmarried couples. However, the differentia does not have a rational nexus with the object sought to be achieved by the CARA regulations, which is to ensure that the best interest of the child is protected. Placing a child in a stable family is undoubtedly in pursuance of a child's interest. However, the respondents have not placed any data on the record to support their claim that only married relationships can provide stability. It is true that separating from a married partner is a cumbersome process when compared to separating from a partner with whom a person is in a living relationship. This is because separation from a married partner is regulated by the law, while living relationships are unregulated by law, other than for the limited purposes of domestic violence. For instance, the law deters a person from securing a divorce immediately by prescribing conditions such as a six-month waiting period after a petition for divorce by mutual consent is filed. Merely because a marriage is regulated by the law, it cannot be assumed that marriage alone or that every marriage accords stability to a relationship. Similarly, it cannot also be inferred that the couples who are not in a married relationship are not serious about the relationship. The stability of the household depends on various factors, such as the effort and involvement of the partners in establishing and running a household, creating a safe space at home, creating a healthy work-life balance, and a household where mental, physical, and emotional violence is not inflicted on one another. There is no single form of a stable household. There is no material on the record to prove the claim that only a married heterosexual couple would be able to provide stability to the child. In fact, this court has already recognized the pluralistic values of our constitution, which guarantee a right to different forms of association. Regulation 5.3, though facially neutral, indirectly discriminates against atypical unions, such as the relationship between non-heterosexual partners, which have not been recognized by the state, Queer marriages have not been recognized by the state and queer persons in atypical unions cannot yet enter into a marriage which is recognized by the state. Though the additional criteria prescribed by the adoption regulations would also affect a heterosexual person's ability, uh, eligibility to adopt a child, it would disproportionately affect non-heterosexual couples. This is because the state has not conferred legal recognition to unions between queer persons in the form of marriage. Consequently, an unmarried heterosexual couple who wishes to adopt a child has the adoption of marrying to meet the eligibility criteria for adoption. However, this option is not available to queer couples. When Regulation 5.3 is understood in the light of this position, a queer person who is in a relationship can only adopt in an individual capacity. This exclusion has the effect of reinforcing the disadvantage already faced by the queer community. The law cannot make an assumption about good and bad parenting based on the sexuality of individuals. Such an assumption perpetuates a stereotype based on sexuality that only heterosexuals are good parents and all other parents are bad parents, which is prohibited by Article 15. This assumption is not different from the assumption that individuals of a certain class or caste or religion are better parents. In view of the above observations, the adoption regulation is violative of Article 15 for discriminating against the queer community. According to the adoption regulations, unmarried couples cannot jointly adopt a child. Though the additional criteria prescribed by the CARA circular would also affect a heterosexual person's eligibility to adopt a child, it would disproportionately affect non-heterosexual couples. This is because the state has not conferred legal recognition to the unions between queer persons in the form of marriage. Consequently, an unmarried heterosexual couple who wishes to adopt a child has the option of marrying, uh, marrying to meet the eligibility criteria for adoption. However, this is not an option for queer couples. When the CARA circular is read in the light of this legal position, a person of the queer community would be forced to choose between their wish to be an adoptive parent 
and their desire to enter into a partnership with a person they feel love and affinity with. This exclusion has the effect of reinforcing the disadvantage already faced by the queer community. For these reasons and the reasons recorded in Section D so and so, the Kara Circular is violative of Article 15 of the Constitution.